and we have been watching water rescues underway throughout the morning, including in Bridgeport, Montgomery County. And Joe Holden joins us live from there. Joe, what's the latest? Well, Jim, the latest is that these uh, rescue operations continue at a uh, really a uh, clip that we've uh, just seen or experiencing. It's, it's intensifying at this point as communities around Montgomery County are now lending support. I spoke to Tim Boyce from Delaware County a short time ago. He tells me they're actually doing okay in Delaware County, so they are sending resources to neighboring counties. In fact, this one of them, I see a, a fire department from Havertown here, and they've unloaded their boats and have been going. Door to door, continuously uh, getting people out of their waterlogged homes. Uh, this is actually, uh, we saw a family uh, loaded uh, just five minutes ago, but to give you a sort of a, a time here, it looks like almost that they're sort of standing down at this point. Uh, I've not seen them idle like this uh, in the entire few hours that we've been here. But I've been using in the distance, and I'm guiding my photographer, Adam Fox, along here with me. There is a red pickup truck beyond the rescue workers and the EMS folks, and I've been watching the water level there. Uh, the water level, I know it's completely blocked, but it is going down, it appears here. Uh, it looks like it is a good six inches lower than where it had been when we first started here around, uh, say, nine o'clock this morning. Uh, something, though, that is uh, not lost on any of us is that the folks who are with these boats have been going nonstop for at least 10 hours from the first report we heard from a man who says that uh, he looked in his basement and the place was totally flooded and then he, he essentially told me he ran for his life and at the, uh, the corner I'm standing on uh, lots of family members lots of uh, it appears neighbors and also people waiting to get some information on pets that they did leave behind and hoping that uh, some of these uh, emergency workers can make that reunion, find these pets that may be in some of these houses, but uh, that might be sort of a triage situation because it looks, again, most of these workers are continuing to focus on rescuing people from these homes. Just in the distance here is 3rd Street in Bridgeport, then it goes 2nd, and then there's Front, and then there is the river. So this is the Schuylkill River right now, an historic crest. I heard Tommy say north of 26 feet. So the river running at 26 feet. The former record was 22 feet. People are saying here, officials calling this a catastrophe. It is going to be a very long time before things are, uh, recovery efforts are even established here because of the amount of damage. So Jim and Janelle, that is the latest as emergency operations and rescues continue here in the borough of Bridgeport. And Joe, as you were talking, we were seeing some of those emergency workers still rescuing people from their homes. And what's been so significant about all of this is the fact that this happened in the middle of the night when people were sleeping and really a lot of them were not expecting water levels at this point, at this level. Uh, so you have to imagine for them, this has been so difficult, so you know, traumatic for them as they try to assess what's going on and some of them still in their homes right now. Some of them still in their homes and some of these folks really talking to us out of a level of just, they're shocked. Uh, they have to tell their story. They want to tell their story. They also, it seems, can't believe what happened. So hearing, hearing the words, verbalizing some of what they've been through, I think is part of the grief process here. Uh, one guy uh, we were talking with, uh, his, his business is in here, so it's not his home, but he has a lot of uh, his interests right now underwater. And I asked if we could do an interview, and you know, you get the look on the face. Uh, the, the gentleman just he, he he sort of broke down at that point. Um, so there is a lot of pain out here. There is a lot of grief. Folks grateful that they made it out of their homes with the shirts and the shoes and, and what they had on them to get to dry ground. Uh, but then there is the toll going forward. Who had flood insurance? Lots of financial impacts. And for a borough that the borough manager told us has maybe five full time public works employees, uh, they are strung out here. Uh, this is a very sad situation unfolding. And I believe he told me that the size of Bridgeport is six tenths of a square mile. 
So it is a small place, but it is a small place that seems at this point to be cut in half by flooding. The railroad tracks are the dividing line, and what is on the other side of those railroad tracks is practically bathtubbed in. The floodwaters are, this is like a bathtub at this point, and while we do see some receding happening, um, it's just not happening, unfortunately, quickly enough uh, for the folks out here. Emergency workers, they have been doing all that they can working since they got those first calls out there. Do they have a sense of how many people may still be inside of their homes, or at this point, is it just them going door to door, looking into windows, seeing who's in need of rescuing? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is door to door. Uh, I think that if folks have been able to reach out to 911, my sense from talking to some emergency workers is that stay put, we'll get to you. Stay on the second floor where it's dry. Uh, the one gentleman I spoke to, his second floor took on water, so he used a fire escape to get to the roof. That's just. It is surreal to hear uh, the accounts that folks are relaying to us, uh, but door-to-door -door operations and also um, at the number that we were given about an hour ago uh, at 10 a.m., was there had been 50 rescues made, so 50 rescues, not people, uh, so families, three people, two people here and there, uh, so the number of actual physical souls is, is higher. but. Uh, just standing here, it's, it's, it's more than 60 now from eyewitnessing uh, the folks who have reached uh, some dry ground. Uh, so it is in an intense operation continuing to play out. And as long as, let's see, there's one, two, there are three boats here. And on the other side of that pickup truck, there's room for two more. So two more and a third are still out going through this section of Bridgeport, which runs from where I'm standing, the way you're looking. The Schuylkill River is just that away. Uh, the last street in the borough to the river is Front Street, and then there's Norristown on the other side. So this is a lot of ground. They're covering a lot of area as they make their way uh, through uh, this part of Bridgeport. And those people just leaving with the clothes on their back, those emergency personnel putting life jackets onto them because the water is so deep at certain points throughout the street there. Uh, what are they saying as they're coming off of those rafts, Joe? Give me a sense of how they're coping with all of this at this point. Uh, Janelle, just, just simply stunned. Uh, lots of folks we've uh, tried to uh, go ahead and chat with. Uh, just they, they, you know, you've, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I know the look when uh, they don't want to talk to us. Uh, but the conversations we've had, uh, some heroic conversations uh, with people relaying to me the uh, the midnight running around the neighborhood and pounding on doors to make sure that neighbors knew things were not going well here and it was time to get out. Um, we, we've seen people carrying their, their wet pets, their dogs. Uh, I've mentioned a woman waiting to hear a word about the cats that she had to leave behind. You think in a split second the decision to try and grab your animal or get yourself out and that was how dire, how sudden, and that is the level of emergency that was unfolding in Bridgeport and for some, sadly, continues to unfold as yet another boat comes ashore, if you will, with uh, trying to make out it, uh, another family yeah, in this like boat. Family, They're going to go around this pickup truck out of our view for a bit. It does indeed look like a family. Um, and all of this area, while I narrate over what we're looking at, this is residential and a mix of light commercial. So there are businesses, people's livelihoods, and homes mixed together. Um, Bridgeport is a, uh, you know, an old river town here in Montgomery County, uh, working class. And a lot of these homes here for three blocks towards the river and to the left of your screen, the borough sort of widens out as the river wraps around. You see over in the shade there, a young gentleman there, Maybe all of five, six, seven years old. Yes. Just got out of the boat. And One dad told me it's his daughter's first boat ride. Oh. Sadly, but yet yeah. with the irony of humor. It's been it's been heartbreaking to watch all of this unfold, Joe. Earlier uh, when we were speaking with you, we saw some elderly people with canes being assisted by the emergency personnel. We saw mothers clutching their babies with their life jackets on as they were uh, ushered to higher ground. This has been a rough night, and we are just getting started as they try to wrap their heads around all of this. 
And, and the question, you know, that we're starting to hear from a lot of these people is what's next? You know, they lost so much in this, and, and, and this is still going on. Yeah, the emotion out here is really raw. Uh, a, a quick sound bite really doesn't even begin to tell the story of the anguish that some of these folks have uh, endured. And remember, there, there, there appears to be a waiting list to get a boat ride out of this neighborhood. Uh, think about that for a second. Mm. Think about how not only forced out of your house and these homes enduring some significant stress load surrounded by water, that's clearly not natural and not dis by design. And what's next? Again, who has flood insurance? Who had uh, the, the foresight? Or it, what is the FEMA designation here? What sort of a floodplain, quote unquote, is this section of Ridgeport? Uh, Jim and Janelle, just some hi history uh, of my own. I covered a catastrophic flood 10 years ago this week in northeastern Pennsylvania. These images are haunting uh, for me because they're always the same. There are always the hardest of workers, the emergency service folks, the firefighters and the paramedics and the police always going into these devastating and just painstaking situations, helping people who have the look of horror on their face and it never leaves you. These images seared into memory, and again, 10 years ago, it was yet another tropical system that dumped too much rain for rivers and creeks to handle, and the river flooding just comes up so quickly, and just if there's not a levee system or a flood mitigation protection system, this is, uh, this is what happens. Uh, without protection, these, uh, these towns take on water, and this, just is, this is history. This is a historic flood, and it is just something that uh, it is almost too much to be to believed. I think earlier we were discussing, you know, when you hear a flood warning versus a tornado warning, you know, tornado warning, people are more likely to react and, and get to, to safety, whereas the flood warning, if you don't have a history of that, you're just thinking, ah, the water's going to go up until something like this happens. And not to this extent yeah. and so quickly. And the fact that this happened overnight, yeah. that woman who was knocking on her neighbor's doors, that was midnight. So a lot of people were presumably sleeping. Well, they'd gone to bed at no 9, idea. 10 o'clock after the rain was just starting to taper off a little bit. And, you know, how would they know this was going to happen? They're sound asleep. How would they know? And those emergency workers, the personnel out there, you really have to take your hats off to them as well because, as Joe was saying, Saying that burrow, it is small. Yeah. <laughs> they are stretched thin right now. They're doing all that they can to make those rescues happen and to reach people who are still trapped inside of their homes. And they've been point. working since this started last night. It's going been nonstop. A busy, busy night for them and for all of those people out there this morning. So we want.